One in three women and one in five men aged 50 years and over will suffer an osteoporotic fracture. Osteoporosis causes bones to become weak and fragile, which can cause them to break easily, even as a result of a minor fall, a bump, a sneeze or a sudden movement. Health experts say fractures caused by osteoporosis uh, can be life-threatening and is a major cause of pain and long-term disability. They further say that fractures due to osteoporosis have a devastating impact on millions of people worldwide and result in enormous socio-economic costs to society and healthcare systems. Yet, despite effective medical advances to reduce fractures, a minority of men and women receive treatment. Only 20% of patients with osteoporotic fractures are actually diagnosed or treated for osteoporosis, the underlying disease. For more on this issue, we now speak to primary health care physician, Dr. Angelique Kutsia for more, and she joins us now via our telephone line. Uh, Dr. Angelique, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening uh, here in SABC News. Perhaps let's start off here. What is osteoporosis? Uh, thank you, Mbali. Thank you for um, having me on. So I think um, it is important to understand that osteoporosis is the loss of your bone density as you grow older. Um, unfortunately, people um, think that this is a disease of only old women or old men. Um, the, the bad news is that your peak bone mass typically reached, uh, or you reach your peak bone mass typically between the ages between 16 and 24, um, slightly earlier for um, girls than boys, and from there on, you um, are then you, you start with your bone loss, um, and uh, then, um, as you have correctly said, more women are affected than men. Uh, I think one of the reasons might be that men are underreported, and that incidence might actually be higher. Because uh, traditionally, one think that because um, females go into the menopause, it's a depletion of estrogens, and therefore it is um, a disease only to um, related to women. Unfortunately, as I've already said, it's not only related. Mm -hmm. And yes, you are absolutely right. It's a growing public health concern. If you look at the data, um, it is escalating. It's costing billions of of rants um, uh, to, to treat these patients uh, on a yearly basis. And again, if we look at our systems that's in place, actually a female above the age of 65 should be routinely tested um, once uh, every two to three years for a bone de at the bone density. Um, you know, it, is, it happens in the private sector more easier than in the public sector. So it is a huge problem to, to try to get these patients um, yeah. identified and get them on treatment before it's too late. Mm. And Dr. Kutsi, I mean, uh, what, uh, you know, what, uh, what would you say are the causes of osteoporosis and uh, what are the early signs to look out for? So the, the thing, or the problem is patients will come to us and say, Oh, doctor, um, I've got back ache and I think it's my osteoporosis. This is wrong. So it's a silent killer. Um, you don't have symptoms until you have your fall or you, um, you know, it's normally your wrist or your hip or your spine that would be, um, you know, that, that loses the bone density. Um, and, and then when you fall, you, you break them much easier than another person. So it is related to that. So certain medication um, are related, you know, if you are taking glucocorticosteroids or warfarin on a continuous basis, or you are under the age of 65, you need to, uh, and with these type of, of diseases or certain diseases, as I've said, uh, thyroid um, is also a problem. You have to start testing your, your 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 bone density to try to get these patients better. So then, um, diet plays a role. A lack of exercise plays a role. Um, alcohol intake plays a role. You know um, the data is clear that more than two 
Klaas is of alcohol per day risk or increase your risk for osteoporosis. So there's a, it's always lifestyle. Lifestyle always plays a big role. And it doesn't seem to, wherever you turn your head, doesn't seem to be changed, you know. Um, so we need to look after our bone health um, mm. going forward. Um, you only have one hip, uh, one left hip, one right hip. So you can, um, you know, when you fracture it, you can get a hip replacement. But again, hip replacement doesn't last forever. The data is clear. If you don't treat your osteoporosis patients before and they fail and, 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 and um, get a, a, a fracture, you've got one-third which um, recover nicely. Yeah. One-third will end up in the hospital. One-third will die. So that is a problem. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Angelica, one would ask, I mean, who is at risk of uh, getting osteoporosis and what does it actually affect on your body? Because I hear you speaking a lot about hip replacements. Yeah, so, it, so, so I think it is important to understand that as you grow older, um, your, your bone density, your bones become more brittle, um, that broke, break easier than they would have. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it very easy now. And that would lead then to osteoporosis. So your bones become abnormally weak and, as I've said, easily uh, uh, fractured. So, and again, after menopause. So women after menopause due to lower levels of estrogens um, because those estrogens help to, to maintain your bo bone mass. Um, those are at high risk. And then if you've got a family history of osteoporosis or if you have um, a, a, before the age of 65, as I've said, if you have a previous fracture, those are the patients that you need to look at uh, well after. And again, you try to start um, a, 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 a screening your patients. Yeah. Um, above 65 men, above the um, age of 70. We should not forget the men. We tend to forget the men. Yeah, and, and uh, Dr. Angelique, I mean, you speak a lot about, uh, you know, uh, the age group 65 years and upwards, uh, but new research has also found uh, that, uh, you know, some people below the ages of 50 years old have also um, been diagnosed uh, with, uh, you know, osteoporosis. What would you say is the cause of this? Would you attribute this to what you're saying, the issue around lifestyle, perhaps? It, it should be around lifestyle. These... Um the relationship between your bone density and fracture risk in your premenopausal women, so those who have not yet gone through your menopause, is not well defined at this stage. We know that your premenopausal women with low bone density may have little increased risk of fracture. So your bone density alone should not be used to diagnose osteoporosis in your premenopausal women. And so, um, again, we come then back to what we have already said about lifestyle, about, um, uh, you know, exercising, um, diet. Diet is so, so important. Your calcium intake, uh, you know, your main dietary sources of calcium, which include your milk and other dairy products. Look at your cottage cheese, your yogurt and your hard cheeses. You need to look at that. Um, if you don't do, if you don't get enough calcium in your diet, you can supplement it in the form of either calcium carbonate or calcium citrate. Uh, your calcium carbonate works the best if you take it with food and your calcium citrate, um, again, um, should be taken on the empty stomach. So your listeners must um, or your viewers need to double check which form of calcium supplements they're using. Um, so supplements is often re recommended for women since they are at a higher risk of developing osteoporosis and they then often don't, as I've already said, consume enough for your food or beverages. Vitamin D intake also very important. Um, there's recommendations that men over right. 70 years and the postmenopausal women so should need to consume around about 800 international units. It's around about 20 okay. micrograms of vitamin D, D per day. And that um, appears to reduce the bone loss and fracture rate again in your older women and, and men. Um, right. Alcohol, as we have I've already said, exercises. So if you can do your exercises, if you can just for 30 minutes 
three times a week. You don't need to run. Just walk. Just walk for 30 minutes three times a week. All right, Dr. Angelique, thank you so much uh, for your time and for that insight. Of course, uh, that is uh, a primary health care physician, Dr. Angelique Katsia, uh, giving us some insight there as the world marks uh, World Osteoporosis Day and basically the early signs to look out for.